G'day, fellas, and welcome to the Golden League. Oh, you know what? I'll give it to you. Welcome to a casted game. I know you guys love to hear it. I'll throw that one out for you. Welcome, welcome. We are in Golden League down on the south side of the map. We've got a Liquid de Muslim playing in the red as the Rus. On the north side of the map, playing as the Mongols, we have got running in the color blue. And well, 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 isn't this quite the matchup for you guys? So we are currently in the round of 16 here. These two players have made their way up through the rankings. Now, neither of these players in the Golden League are guaranteed to get through to that final stage, but they are going to be looking to get up there through this at the moment. Beautiful back hunt coming through for running here. You've got to definitely feel happy with that seeing the, the two hunts off in the same direction. Going up against the Rus, it's going to be important he takes those out in the early game, and indeed, he does do that. But uh, yeah, at the moment, th there are four different players that have qualified for EGC TV's Golden League playoff stage. So as you guys will know, Golden League has been running for quite some time, uh, but running uh, and as well as Demuslim are both in the running, and I po apologize because there's going to be so many puns, unintentional and intentional, throughout this series. Uh, that we are, are going to be seeing here. The, like, these two guys are very intent on, on getting all the way up there. And both of them sitting in contention. So at the moment, I think Demuslim sitting at about rank 9 uh, with regard to the points and his opponent uh, running, probably sitting at about rank 12. Uh, so both of these players, players genuinely uh, very, very close to contending for that position uh, and, and to try and get in through to that 8th spot. But we'll take a look at how Demuslim is doing at the moment. Uh, and, and just, I guess, before we, we finish talking about that, um, you can catch that 15 GMT. Uh, so when this video gets uploaded, uh, the, uh, the, the tournament will be starting, or, or at least day two is going to be starting, uh, a, an hour afterwards. So make sure you check it out. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can find it. But I would encourage you guys, come along there, come out, check out the, the channel, see how everything is doing, because it's, it's going to be fun. I'm not going to be casting. It'll be Killer Pigeon and Nilly that will be casting it. But uh, I want you guys to come along, check it out, because it's going to be pretty epic. There's a lot of great players that are going to be going there. But these two guys are going to be going at it today. And they're going to be fighting it out. So already, uh, I, I guess before we even move on for, from that, I should also mention, it, it's honestly, it's one of my favorite uh, styles that is coming through in this round. So this is the third round. As you guys know, in the first round, we had open battlefields. In the second round, we saw off meta combat. And in round three, we have exclusive civilizations for these players. It means that both players get to choose different civilizations. So the way that it works, the Muslim picks one civilization because he is the highest seat. Then running picks two civs. So as an example, you know, you could start off, you could pick the Delhi if you think they're the best civ. And then your opponent gets the choice of picking two civs for themselves. So maybe they'll pick the Mongols and the French. And then it's back to you. You get to pick two more civs. And then they pick up, up another two civs and then the final civ goes over to you. So both players get four civs each. Not, no mirror matchups whatsoever. And that's what excites me the most. Because you guys know, I feel the same way about mirror matchups as most of you guys do as well. It gets a little bit boring when you watch, you know, the same matchup over and over again. Like how many French mirrors can you watch on 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 dry arabia let's be honest they're, they're great they're a great civilization to have on dry arabia but you know the great thing about this tournament or the great thing about this round is you don't see any of those french mirrors coming out so i gotta say i love it i love it i think it's so smart but a lot of a lot of uh oh my lord that's a lot of villagers beginning to move out towards a boar i suspect and indeed we have a scout lying in wait Keep in mind, the uh, the stable has already come down here for running, and he's going to be heading out towards this position. You can see the Khan as well as the Scout moving around here. He's actually got a horseman out. Only a single horseman, so not even going for the double horseman at this stage. And you can see the sheep having to make his way back. Just look at that. Look at that. That is a fat little sheep, isn't it? You just want to eat that bad boy right up. Now a couple of Scouts going to be applying pressure to the Uvu. Got to be careful with that next sheep. It could get potentially stolen. You can see he does finally make his way safely over towards that, that town center. But uh, yeah, only one early horseman coming out at this stage. Still yet to scan out that boar. I don't think he's spotted it. I mean, he knows the boar is there, but he doesn't. He's not aware that his enemy is uh, is actively taking it, at least not yet. But we'll see how he's placed it because he's got that wooden fortress already going to come down. So I think even in the in the case where a couple, a horseman or two move over towards this direction, it is going to be a, uh, a difficult position. And Demuslim now going to be looking to uh, fall back from that front position. He's found out those, those two horsemen, forces them back. And we see that running is going to be looking to go into those deer stones. Nice little opening here for him. He does spot out. His opponent has expanded already out to this early stage uh, of the boar. You can see the boar kind of hiding in the ground there. I suspect that's because of the buildings. The buildings change the elevation uh, when they do it. They need to be built on flat ground. And so these, the villagers are kind of like 
how would you say it? They're also landscapers in a way. But uh, running behind this, he's already got the first pasture out. Might be looking for a second pasture, but could just be looking towards a castle age. It definitely seems like it. He's got nine villagers on food at the moment. He'll continue trickling in sheep faster than he would otherwise. And now back towards the south side of the map, the Muslim about to age up. Five minute 20 age up for him. He's got 360 bounty, which on Dry Arabia, that's a pretty good amount. That is a pretty damn good amount. And, you know, I'm going to be feeling it for Demuslim. Demuslim's Rus is up there. I would say, like, it, it is one of his best civs. Obviously, English, a very strong civilization for Demuslim as well. But the Rus is a civilization that we actually seem bring out quite a bit. Uh, so, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see a decisive victory coming out for Demuslim here. But it looks like all those villagers are just going to be jumping inside that wooden fortress. And you can see the intent here uh, from his opponent looking to try and get up that outpost. He knows how important it is to apply pressure towards this wooden fortress and towards this boar. Now going to be able to get it down. We'll take a look. Demuslim does manage to see it. Arrow slits has come through. So he should be able to lock this situation or to lock this position down. And you can see how much, how much damage comes out onto that horseman. First horseman going to be coming down. And now those scouts are going to be turning their attention to towards this outpost and villagers going to be trying to survive you can see them sitting here in the pocket he's, he's actually found a very nice spot and the horseman going to be looking pretty decent as it continues to repel each of those each of those uh uh each of those scouts but they do make their way back first villager might be going down here we can see i'm trying to click on it it's hard with the hitbox but there we go villager does go down first villager going to be going down scout trying its best khan going to be repelling that and indeed make sure that it gets out alive or rather make sure that it dies and now each of the other two scouts going to be turning their attention towards that villager. This villager, how much how much attack does it have? Six attack, doesn't have the 12 yet. But now, look at the villagers getting pulled here for the Muslim. He is intent on forcing this position uh, away from his opponent. He knows if this outpost goes up, that it's going to cause havoc for him. Because I suspect, even though we see that this wooden fortress is unable to shoot the villagers on this side, you can almost guarantee that this, this outpost is going to be able to hit these villagers underneath. It's just the way the Mongols work. The Mongols, they've got a little bit of magic when it comes to their outposts and, and the distance that they, they can go but uh yeah i wouldn't be surprised now it looks like that outpost is probably going to go go down you can see it's got about 30 health and indeed the villager falls back cancelling going to be happening there and uh it looks like running going to be running back towards his base and the muslim going to be very happy with this eight villagers still alive and behind the scenes he's been working on going up to that castle age you can see he's stacking up tickets as well he's just sold out some more wood he is doing very well with regard to his economy. Second lumber camp already in. You can see he's eaten into this forest. He is really getting on in there. And at the same time, back towards the Mongol base, we've got the exact same thing happening over towards this position. You can see him moving back, trying to head back towards the base with a couple of sheep. I suspect he knows, yeah, not, not a lot of sheep left under the town center. You can see he's trying his best uh, to get that in. And another pasture going to get added down here. Probably going to be moved out towards the Uvu shortly. But uh, running, I mean, he hasn't done a lot of damage. Typically, you're going to want to do, do damage against the Rus player in the early stages of the game. Oh, I thought we had idols there for a second. Uh, but um, has not been able to do any damage in the early stage. So I do like this opening here from the Muslim. The fact that he feels confident enough to go out here for an early boar and then still do a fast castle behind it. Like, look at the cojones on this guy. This is impressive. Also, uh, did actually do a bit of a trade here to sell stone. Now going to be looking to get arrow slits on each of the output or each of the wooden fortresses here. Obviously, we saw the arrow slits come through on the initial wooden fortress. So he's able to put that one up basically for the cost of nothing. And now dropping down archery ranges behind the base. And the question is whether his enemy is going to scout this. And indeed he does almost immediately. You can see the scouts in position down towards the south. He's going to be working on this gold. He's got to back gold here. So cognizant of the fact that his enemy may push in towards the front. He's going to leave his villages down towards the south. And now the Muslim are going to have to fall back off that gold. He was trying his best to get more gold in. Doesn't want to be using all of his tickets on gold. Uh, but he's not going to have too much luck in this position. But now we can see that the units or the cavalry continues to run around circles from running here the khan gonna just be revealing itself as it did attack that building but he is aware of what his enemy is up to he knows that there is going to be horse archers coming out and uh the muslim gonna be in a great spot here because he's gonna have access to this abbey of the trinity it's gonna be pumping out uh, warrior monks and he'll be looking to take control of the relics that are on the map we'll take a look at the spawn the way that it's come in one two relics spawning pretty close to the muslim one two relics spawning pretty close here uh, to running and then over on this far side you've got the third 
or the third relic for each of these guys a little bit further away. Uh, but uh, I'm pretty confident both players have scouted the entire map. Indeed, they have. So they are fully aware of where all the resources are. And we've got that age up coming through now for running. What does he look to do once he reaches the castle age? We'll take a look. He is going to have access to the step redout. The step redout not going to act as a market. So he's going to need to drop that one down independently. Uh, and we do now see that market coming down. Uh, so that, that wasn't a bad timing right there. I'm gl glad I called that one out because uh, he's going to be wanting to drop that market down and then just buy some wood almost immediately. You can see villagers moving to the other side, making sure that that step redout is, is going to get full use. Actually, I think he might be heading out to the uh, the deer carcasses. Indeed, he does. Uh, but immediately going to be buying some wood. You can hear him on the backside here. Horse Archer is going to be trying to get out. I, I suspect it's going to be wood into a monastery is the way he's going to look to try and play this. He wants to make sure that with regard to his enemy dropping down. And now we see that wood being purchased. And it is going to be a prey tent. So the prey tent does get dropped down. So doing the right thing in this scenario and looking to try and take control of the relics that are closer to his base. Wants to avoid letting his opponent get up to those five relics because that is what would really haunt him and really hurt him uh, if that were to happen because he's going to have the advantage and we can already begin to see the warrior monks heading out over across the map. And it looks like the Muslim might be heading out towards his central safe relic. And I do think that is the right play in, the, in this scenario. Uh, going up against an enemy that is thinking about doing the same thing as you. Uh, it makes a lot of sense to be going for your closer relics rather than the ones closer to the enemy base. Because if you made your way out all the way to here, there is a high chance that you get scouted out. Now, we can see at the moment, there's not a lot of units out for running. But in the event that, that there was a Khan out over here, you can never really, you know, discount the fact that there could be a, a scout or a Khan. And now Lance is going to be looking to come in. We can see running, going to be trying to get in, going to be heading in underneath the town center. Village is going to be jumping inside as well. Looks like the, the Warrior Monk going to be able to potentially wall a lull if things get dangerous. But Village is looking to, to fall back from this position. Going to be careful. A couple of hits coming on. First Lance are going to be going down and running. Going to be running for his life from this position. Trying to enter into those stealth forests. Find his way through. But now the Horse Arch is just doing a great job of just continuing to follow up on this. Villagers have evacuated from over on the west side. That has completely been exhausted, that boar. And this is the great thing. Now it can fall back on the safe food underneath his town center. More relics being picked up. That's going to be the second relic getting picked up here by the Muslim. You can see that there are four relics remaining on the map. Hold on, Warrior Monk. Where are you going, my friend? you got to grab that relic and then you got to head back. You are going the wrong direction, my friend. But uh, we'll take a look over on the north side of the map because the prayer tent is out. And you can see he is rallying in his first shaman. Oh my god, oh my god, did you guys see that? Oh my god, did you guys see that? The shaman came out here, he was literally out here, and all of a sudden, the Muslims picks up the relic, he steals it, literally, literally steals it in his line of sight, he takes it. And I think even if that if that uh, shaman had picked up that relic, there was a good chance that the that Muslim would have been able to snipe it. So he's going to be able to take away one of those safe relics from his opponent. So smart moves coming out from the Muslim, very, very greedy, but at the same time, impressive stuff coming out from him. Keep in mind, he did have access to that first relic, there it was, second relic down towards the south, it's now coming in, and then that third relic, we, we theorized that it would have been this one, but instead, he decides to put push over onto his enemy's side. A couple of Lancers still holding position, still just looking to do some damage out here on the berries. Not a lot of food underneath that town center here for the Muslim and now going to be picking up this monastery. He is confident. He is he's going to be looking to get that fourth relic in. We can see that one of the relics was actually picked up here by running and running. Going to be running into danger as the Muslim sniped out that warrior monk, out that warrior monk, that, uh, that shaman. And down towards the base of his opponent, you can see that the horse archer timing here has come in perfect. And this is the consequence of that failed attack. You know, we, we talked about this a little bit earlier. The fact that in this scenario, what happens is that the Mongol player needs to do damage and he failed to do damage. So if this outpost gets up and arrow slits get researched and all of a sudden you've got an outpost denying this food resource because the Khan is sitting down here or a scout is sitting up here and providing line of sight, then you've got a problem because all of a sudden you can't gather up that food. So you have to move somewhere else and as a result, it's going to take time. But now we see the warrior monk looking to pick it up. Walla Lol going to be coming down. He's, he's decided that he's not going to contest it uh, and now going to be turning his attention towards these units. A lot of lances beginning to come out out for running. He just drops the relic and keeps moving on. Shaman going to be able to pick that up and head back to base. Very happy, but now more relics being picked up. It's going to be the fourth one getting picked up here uh, for the Muslim. Re relic numbers four for, for the Muslim, one for running. And we see the Muslim just continuing to kite away, doing a great job. Keep in mind, these units share the same movement speed. 1.62 versus 1.62. The only difference is that the Mongol units have got access to the Khan, but still, we do not see the Khan. And look at the damage coming out against that. It is just a ludicrous amount of damage coming out on those Lancers. Just beautiful micro in that scenario. And uh, you really got to appreciate the Muslim's beautiful micro on the Rus. He is just notorious for it. And he continues to look great. As he adds a second town center in, it could not be. It is in 
indeed. And more archery ranges coming in. Look, look at the amount of gold he's got in the bank right now. He is a very happy hippo. And uh, this is just going to make him feel even better because this second town center basically guarantees him a very strong win condition. That is the late game. When we take a look back over towards the base of his opponent, he's obviously got the prayer tent, but he only managed to snag one relic out of the five. And now sacred sites are getting captured. And the Muslim is putting on the pressure despite going for that second town center. He does have the military mass comparing these two players. 12 military for running versus 29 for the Muslim. His military obviously a lot cheaper. Uh, half the price of his opponent. You know, you're talking 80, 40 uh, for the horse archer versus the 140 slash 100 uh, for the uh, the lancers for, for running. But now the Muslim just going to be able to sit on top of the production. Obviously, running is going to be able to push. You can see he's actually got two sets of two Lancers coming out. So he could go for a little bit of an attack here. It looks like Lance is about to pop. They've got to be careful because they will get picked off if he's not paying attention. And indeed, turns around. Going to be now looking to take those out. He's got plus two ranged armor. It looks like he's barely got any armor. Just the way that he, he pierces through. And now the attack going to be pushing through. I'm not sure if there's a Khan here. But we can see the Yam Network going to be applying that aura. 2.23 movement speed going to be coming in. Uvu is depleted. Thanks for letting us know. And Demuslim now going to continue retreating from this position but just beautiful kiting coming in we can take a look i'm going to try and select there we go getting all of those lances and you can watch and witness the beauty coming out from the muslim just sniping out those low health lances doing a great job it looks like a wall might be coming down here no it's not going to be a wall it's just a bit of a, a crevice uh, but uh sprinkled in placement is on that outpost he's going to continue following along with those horse archers but doing such a great job just microing them out but slowly the numbers are beginning beginning to thin you can see that the way that these units are dropping down that's going to be the fourth one that just drops down here here on this screen and more attacks happening in the middle of the map it looks like warrior monk's gonna be able to capture up the sacred site in the middle uh, but gonna be unfortunately decapped almost immediately and now more horse archers coming into the mix plenty of warrior monks coming out as well for the muslim so he is just continuing to train warrior monks and now looking to use them on the front line they're gonna be providing up that saint's blessing as well as the saint's blade which gives them an extra two attack so these guys are really buffed up an extra four damage right now so they are feeling pretty decent and now he's gonna be able to hold on to this position and continues pushing forward i don't know whether we've got boyar's fortitude in just yet we'll check and have a look at the blacksmith if i can find it there it is uh boyar's fortitude is indeed in uh, 105 ho health on the horse archers and uh, a little bit more extra health on those warrior monks as well have a look how much they've got they've got up to 210 so that is not bad should be taking out this outpost. This outpost still yet to ga grab that sprinkled emplacement uh, at this point. But uh, it's going to be a, a tough ask for him just because of the lack of scouts that he's got out. And now once again in the middle of the map, we've got ourselves a bit of a cavalry combat uh, timing here. As the military academy has come in, the Muslim going to be working overtime to get more units out. You can see he's got so much production in queue. A lot of upgrades coming through from him as well. Going for his double broad axe. Going for his horticulture. Going for his specialized pick. Actually, that's not specialized pick. That's fitted leather work, Drongo, you dickhead. That is a plus one a melee armor. That is, that is a different upgrade all together, my friend. The Muslim not even on uh, gold at the moment. Only gathering up stone. Seven villages here. So it could be looking to go into a castle. Back in the middle of the map. Sacred Site's going to be taken up. And it looks like an overwhelming victory at this point in time for the Muslim. Like when it comes to position, we take a look at his economy. He's on 66 villages, 32 military. Compare that to his opponent, who's on 49 and 17. Keep in mind behind this as well, the Muslim's got the four relics in the back compared to running, who's only got one relic. So everything is going the way of the Muslim at this point in time. The, uh, the big thing is obviously running is just going with a full composition of lances. You know, I'd almost like to see a few horsemen thrown in here, but the difficult thing is just going up against those non-stop horse archers it's really difficult to deal with so whether he looks to go into like a full archer composition to try and deal with it that's going to be the other question but in the middle of the map we can see those warrior monks you know i wish that was the case but having six warrior monks on a sacred site doesn't actually capture it faster um what game is it i remember there's a game that does do that there's a game that you know if, if you've got more units holding a a uh an, an area it captures faster i can't remember exactly what game it is i just remember it uh because uh, the more units the faster it goes and the lance are gonna be unfortunately lonely down here gonna be losing its life as those horse archers do chase it to the edge of the map and unfortunately my friend that is out of bounds as you can see your cursor does change but um a great position here for for uh, running's opponent to muslim he's looking great he's got all those four relics and continuing now to begin tra transitioning towards the farms 19 minutes it's about where you'd expect it to come through he's focusing very heavily on on that uh, that food economy obviously the uh, horse archers going to be very expensive uh, for him but with that food economy it's going to help him out a huge amount because the rus love food it, it is something that they're constantly fighting for and one of the things that is really going to help them out throughout the game is having that strong food economy Obviously, the bounty helps them out a huge amount, but 
they're able to train a lot of important units from that. You know, most importantly, it's going to be the Horse Archer, but they also get to train up the Scout if they need to head into that. The Men at Arms, another unit that they love to make. And of course, the Strautzy when we get through to the Imperial Age. That'll be coming out. Now, a lot of these units now looking in, in a bit of a difficult spot. You can see he's built up a huge mass of Horse Archers. We'll take a look over from Running's perspective and watch how much damage he actually takes here. You can see his attack moving rather than focusing down these units. And he's doing a great job with it. And just going to continue fighting. And this is the difficult thing. Even if you've got the Khan here to provide that bonus uh where is the khan by the way it, it's i feel like we haven't seen that khan for a while running might be a, a little bit lost in this scenario he, he is trying his best to hold on but you can see just that beautiful kiting coming out from demuslim the kiting god right now this is this is how you micro honestly if, if you were wa wondering you know how do you micro this kind of composition it is this it is shoot it is scoot don't take your eyes off your horse archers if you've got idols you can see right now that there are idle villagers five idols for demuslim do not take your eyes off these villagers this it would uh, off these uh, these units this is how you micro this is a micro masterclass coming out from demuslim here it is absolutely beautiful immaculate stuff and now he looks to try and take control of this game you can see he's taken out all the military from his opponent we've got 33 military uh for demuslim compared to his opponent who's on nine and he taps out good game gets called that is the first game in this series it's a best of three series going over to muslim over to the Muslim. Uh, I should be careful with my uh, my my <laughs> my alliteration there. Uh, he'll be heading into game number two very happy uh, and uh, already on match point. So make sure you check it out. It'll be the next video uploaded to this channel. Thank you so much for watching.